Praise the name of the Lord and good evening to those of you that are in the hearing of my voice. I greet you this evening in the wonderful and worthy name of Jesus. I know that some of you are on at this time and I want to give God thanks for you that you can join us tonight in our school of prayer. We give the Lord praise for how you have been with us even today. We want to give God thanks for his mercies. We want to give God thanks for his loving kindness and his faithfulness that he continues to show us day by day. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. We're going to bow our heads even now for a word of prayer as we begin. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you honor, Lord, and we give you glory. We thank you, Father, for this day, for sparing our lives. We thank you, Lord, for your presence that you have given to us, even to cheer our hearts. We thank you for the peace that you've also given to us, Lord, that peace, that passive all human understanding that is keeping us, Lord, even at this time. And so, Lord, as we begin this uh, school of prayer session, we ask you, Father, your blessings upon it, everything that should be said and done. We pray, Heavenly Father, and it will be to the upliftment, it will be to the edification of your people, it will mean some strength and encouragement to them, even as they're listening in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, you bless the audience, all of those who are listening even here in Barbados and those who will tune in all over the world. We pray God your blessings upon them tonight in the mighty and powerful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We bless the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. We want to thank God for you. We see our Sheridan Williams. Praise the Lord. We thank God for you. Our sister Nadine Savory. We want to thank God for you. Once you're there, just let us know that you're there and so that we can greet you. We want to greet our members from the God in Love Tabernacle Ministries. We want to thank God for you. Praise the name of the Lord. And we bless you tonight with the blessings of God that maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. Tonight we are going to go to the Word of God where we're going to do a study on the Word of God. We are going to go to the book of Joel, Joel chapter 1. And then after we go through the Word, we're going to have some times of prayer. Amen. There'll be persons from the ministry that will call in and that they will pray for the nation. They will pray for families, different areas they'll be praying for. And so we ask you to join with us in your homes in agreement to those prayers that will be offered up tonight. And we know that wherever we are, the Lord is able to hear and he's able to answer us. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So turn your Bibles with me to the book of Joel chapter 1. We have here within the book of Joel a picture that is painted of something that would have taken place. Joel says, The word of the Lord that came to Joel the son of Petuel, he says, listen to this what I'm going to tell you. He wanted the old men, he wanted the children, he wanted everyone to hear what he was saying to them. And this is what he says, Hear this, ye old men, and give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Has this been in your days, or even in the days of your father? So what he is, is describing here, or what he wants them to understand, there's something that has taken place, and he's questioning the elders to find out if something like this would have ever taken place within their time. He says, tell it to your children. And let your children tell their children and their children another generation. And this is what took place is in read in verse 4. He says, That which the palm worm have left, have the locust eaten. And that which the locust have left, have the canker worm eaten. And that which the canker worm have left, have the caterpillar eaten. And so we see here in verse 4, According to what he is showing to the elders, and as he wants them to tell it to their children, this is sure devastation. Because there is, from reading here, there is nothing that has been left. It seems to me there has been an invasion of the locusts. And one came, and another came, as we see it here. And then at the end of it, there is nothing. He says the palm worm, the locust, the canker worm, and the caterpillar. And we see here, 
after they had devastated the land and eaten everything, nothing was left. And then he called upon the drunkards because you know that they would have been dependent on the harvest for wine and for merriment. He says to them, you drunkards, weep and howl. And eat drunk drinkers of wine because of the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. So here, within this chapter, the drunkards and the drinkers of wine, because of the palm worm and the canker worm and the caterpillar, came in and even destroyed the vineyards. He says, for a nation is come up upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he has the cheek teeth of a great lion. So he's telling them of the fierceness of these locusts and this caterpillar, how they devastated the crops. He says, he have had my wine waste and bark my fig tree. Every piece of vegetation, these canker worm, caterpillar, locusts just came in and they ate everything and nothing was left. Then he says in verse 8, he calls now not only to, on the drunkards to weep and to howl, because there was nothing left for them, he calls on the people to weep like a virgin, and a virgin who have lost her husband. He asks the virgin to gird herself with sackcloth, and to weep because of what has taken place. He says the meat offering and the drink offering is cut off from the house of the Lord. So not only does this affect the drunkards, not only did this affect the inhabitants, but what had taken place had affect even the house of the Lord because it was the priests and those that did service before the Lord, they had to be dependent on the, the wine as well and the crops and the different things that they will bring and, and offer unto God. And he called also on the priests, the Lord's ministers, to mourn and to cry out to God because of what had taken place. He says the field is wasted. He goes on here to describe the condition, what had taken place. He says the field is wasted and the land, the land mourneth. For the corn is wasted. There's no more corn now. There's no more wine. The wine is dried up. And he says the very oil hmm, from the olives, they have been languishing. He says, be ye ashamed, O ye husbandmen. The husbandmen is the ones who would have taken care of the crops. And now they have nothing to take care of. He says, be ye ashamed, O ye husbandmen. How, O ye vine dressers. For the wheat and for the barley. And because of the harvest of the field is perished. It seems to me from reading this passage here. That there is drought and there is famine. He says the vine is dried up. And the fig tree languishes. And the pomegranate tree. The palm tree. All of the vegetation he is speaking of here. Has come to a place where they have been dried up. Even the apple tree. So those um, trees where persons would have depended upon for fruit. There is no more fruit for them to eat. There is no more grapes for them to make wine. There is no more um, oil for them to have. And so as we see as he paints this picture. As he comes down in the verses. We see that it is utter devastation. He says that even all of the trees out of the field are withered. Because joy is withered away from the sons of men. So it had came to a place where the very joy that the people had within that time was taken away from them. And they had come to a place where there was great depression, there was grief, there was sorrow. Because what had taken place was something that had never taken place since these uh, persons had lived. And so he, he began to question them. But note here in verse 13. He calls for them to do something. He calls for them as uh, we say there must be a response. When something like these things take place. He says in verse 13. Gird yourself and lament ye priests. He's calling on the priests. 
the ministers of God because these are the ones that know the, the word of God. So he's calling on them. Just as in this time God is calling on his people, those of us that know the word, those of us that know how to get hold of God, those of, know, of us who know how to pray, God is depending on us to intercede and to prayer and to ask God for his mercy. So the prophet says to the priest, Gird yourselves and begin to cry out. Begin to cry out and let your voice be heard. Begin to howl, ye ministers of the altar. He says, Come lie all night in sackcloth, ye ministers of my God, for the meat offering. You hear this? And the drink offering is withholden from the house of your God. So even there, at the house of God, what had taken place didn't only affect the, the, the normal man within the society, but what had taken place, it even affected the house of God because in the house of God, there were no more offerings. There were no more sacrifices. This is how it was. And so he was calling upon the ministers, calling upon the priests to get before the face of God and to cry out to him because of what had happened. Not only did he call them to, to cry and to weep before the Lord, but he asked of them to sanctify a fast. You see, in times of desperation, you cannot come to a place where you throw up hands, especially those of us that know the Lord. We have to put our trust and our confidence in God and call upon Him in the times of desperation. And this is what we ought to do even now People of faith, people who trust in God. Amen. We cannot be as the heathen. We cannot be as the pagans, those that do not know God. We have to step up now to the forefront, the front line, so to speak. And we have to make a stance for our God. And we need to be those ones who would intercede and call on the name of the Lord so that God would hear our cry and come and turn around situations for us. Because the word of God still stands. He says, if my people who are called by my name, amen, will humble themselves and pray. He has made some promises there that he is going to hear and he is going to answer. Today, it doesn't matter what what geographical location you are in. You can call upon the name of the Lord. He is the omnipresent God, the God who is everywhere. Praise the name of the Lord that we can call upon. So even though you are in your homes, even though you are isolated, you can yet call upon God just as the prophet called upon the ministers and the priests to call upon the name of the Lord and to go into God in prayer and in fast and intercession, God is demanding of us, even at this time, not to labor. I want to say to us, those of you that are listening in, praise the name of the Lord. Those of you that are listening in, this is not a time for vacation for the church. So any of you that have that in your mind said, oh, this is going to be a long vacation. This is got no time for any vacation. This is a time for the people of God to pray. We are hearing uh, coming out from the, the, the different news that we are supposed to test, test, test. But I am saying to us, the body of Christ, we are called to prayer, prayer, prayer. Amen. Prayer, uh, as it says, push Prayer until something happens. Prayer until the heavens rain. Prayer until the heavens open. Prayer until God sends the answer for us. So he says, sanctify your fast. And he says, call a solemn assembly. We may not be able to gather in one place at this time. But wherever we are, we can gather our families. And we can pray with our families. Um, those of you that are strong enough to go into a fast. So this, um, sometimes you have to let alone that meal. And have to go into God and to reach him in prayer and fasting. Because we know that there are different levels of prayer. Praise the name of the Lord. Is the asking. There's a seeking and then there's knocking. Praise the name of the Lord. Sometimes you have to intensify your prayer where you will normally in the first stage just uh, you know say normal praise i tell you because of the situation sometimes you have to intensify your praise where it goes to that place where you knock 
until the doors be opened. Praise the name of the Lord. He says, sanctify a fast and call a solemn assembly. And he says to gather the elders, those that, um, that know God, those that know the word of God. And he says, let all the inhabitants of the land unto the house of the Lord your God cry unto the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Because he says, the day of the Lord is at hand. He says, alas, for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand. And when we read about the day of the Lord, it speaks of that day of visitation, that day of judgment. Praise the name of the Lord. And this is what would have taken place at that time. God was visiting the land. God was visiting the people. And because of this, he called on the people to prayer and to seek God's face and to call upon his name. He says, it's not the meat cut off from before your eyes. Yea, joy and gladness even from the house of God. And as I read this, you know, sometimes we say that these things have been written for so long, but they, they, they become so relevant because right now, we know that many people who love even to go to the house of the Lord, you know, even from calls that I have received, people, I uh, know, they, they miss coming out from the house of the Lord. And it says, say, joy and gladness from the house of the, of the Lord. He even goes on to say the seed is rotten because in that time where there was drought, there was no water. So even though the people would plant the seeds, it, it made no sense because the seed that they plant would not have a harvest. The seed began to rot in the very clods. He says the garners are laid desolate. Those who would garn near the, the crops and throw, go out there and reap. There's nothing for them to do. Hmm? And this puts me in mind even of those who might be even say, um, laid off. You're at home. There's nothing really for you to do that, that not regular job that you may go out to. Uh, he says, and the barns are broken down, for the corn is withered. The, 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 the heat of the sun parched the very corn, and there's no more corn there for the people to harvest. And not only that, you see, it was devastation that affected not only some people, but every sphere of society down to the very animals were affected. He says here in verse 18, how do the beasts grow? For if there's no vegetation, no grass, nothing for the stocks to have, how would they be able to eat? He says the beasts grown and the herds of the cattle now are becoming perplexed because they have no pasture. He says, yea, the flocks of the sheep are made desolate. So he paints a picture here which is very grave. A picture of devastation. A picture where the, 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 the palmer worm came in and he ate. Then what uh, was left, the locusts came in and ate. Then what the locusts left, the canker worm came in and ate. And then what the canker worm had left, the caterpillar had eaten. There was completely nothing there for the people to, to, to eat. Or even for them to do. He says, O oh Lord, to thee will I cry. And, and, and in situations like these, just as he writes this here in verse 19, we cannot do anything else but to look up. Situations like these causes us to look up to the Lord because the Lord is our only help. The Bible tells us that vain is the help of man. Man can only help up to a certain point. That is why it is not good to put our trust in princes or in chariots. Our trust and our confidence should be in the Lord at all times. So that when these things around us, sometimes these things that we are depending on, fail us. We will know the God in whom we serve, who is the source. And we can go back to the source and call upon him. And I do believe that this is what God wants for us to do, even at this time. Amen. To look to him who is our source. Look to him who is our keeper, our shade upon our right hand. The one who is our Jehovah Jireh, our provider, because all things in the first place comes down from him and so he wants us to look to him just as the prophet here in verse 19 cried out he says oh lord 
Mm? Who do we else, who do we have else to call upon but the Lord at this time? Uh, he is the one that has the words of eternal life. He says, O Lord, to thee will I cry, for the fire have devoured the pasture of the wilderness, and the flame have burned all of the trees of the field. And the beasts of the field cry, even the very beasts of the field. Back in this time when the prophet prophesied, even the very beasts of the field felt the impact of what was happening. And they did not cry little with tears, but they also were impacted. And as he paints it, he says, even the beasts cry. He says, even the, the beasts of the field cry unto thee, for the rivers of waters are dried up. And the fire have devoured the pastures of the wilderness. But there's something that I want you to closely observe as he goes on in chapter 2, reading from verses 12. What must we do when devastation hits? What must we do when there are times of crisis? What must we do? And I, I want to say that God is so good that he places... Um, the instructions within his word that we will not um, know in times like this what to do. He says here in verse 12, Therefore now thus says the Lord. The prophet was speaking at that time. He was trying to bring to the old man to the remembrance to find out if something like this had happened. But here now he is speaking on the behalf of God. He is speaking to the people of what the Lord wants them to do. And he says, therefore now says the Lord. And I want you to note here tonight what the Lord is saying. This is not what man is saying. This is what the Lord himself is saying to us. And when God speaks, we have to give heed to what he is saying because... He is the only one that can help us. If we look to him, it is going to be well with us. But if we turn our backs and forsake him, then we'll find ourselves in a place where we would not like to be. He says, thus says the Lord, turn ye even to me with all of your heart. This is what the Lord wants. He wants us in this time, just as it was a time of devastation, in the time of Joel, even in this crisis that we are facing, God wants us to turn to him. But not just turn to him as some people turn to him and pray when they are in trouble. And when then the Lord delivers them, they don't want God anymore. God wants us to turn to him with our whole heart with everything that is within us amen and i think he is bringing us to that place where you know we, we have to come to that place of full surrender turning ourselves over to him completely because there's nothing more to do even at this time he says with your whole heart it is all about the heart you see man look on the outward appearance but it is god who looks on the inside, as Peter tells us, the hidden man, that hidden part that man cannot see. Amen. This is the part that God is looking for. God is not looking for how good we can speak, how well we can perform, how much we can say, how eloquent we are. God is looking in the inner part of us to see how our hearts would respond and I'm praying that even in times like these that our hearts praise the name of the Lord would respond in humility respond in love respond with that reverential fear unto God and that we will truly worship him in spirit and in truth he says turn to me with all of your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. Get in contact or connect yourself with your maker. Praise the name of the Lord. And I'm even saying to those of us that may not, have not been walking as we should have been. This is a time to draw near to God. A time of consecration. This is a time of readying ourselves before the Lord. I, I want to thank God for his love. Amen. That he has even given us an opportunity that we can sit back in these times of quiet reflection. We can um, look inwardly within our hearts. Amen. Because you know the word of God said that God desires truth 
on the inward parts and we can you know alone by ourselves look within ourselves see what we're doing where we are going examine our own hearts this is not the time for the pointing of the finger and the looking at someone else and the, the, the pulling down or the criticizing of someone this is time to say it is not my brother nor my sister Lord it is me standing in the need of you and examine our hearts amen to make sure that it is well with us and that it is well with our souls amen because I want to say here tonight even as I go through the, the word of God amen even though we are believing God for a turnaround I want to say we are in the end times and time is running out one day even if God turns around this situation one day we're, it, it, the word is going to come to end we, are, we have to live with this consciousness in our mind that we are not here forever we are only here and those of us that the children of God the calling of God upon our lives we are only here on an assignment amen and we want to fulfill that assignment we want to do the will of God in our lives amen and we have been this is nothing to alarm us as the Bible says that it should not come and catch us unawares because God has already placed all of these things within his word that he has told us what is going to take place as the time climax says everything is there within the word of God we don't even need a, 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 what I would say a prophetic word to tell us it is clearly outlined in the scriptures he says that these are perilous times that we are living in he tells us of what kind of times they are going to be he even reminds us in the word that as in the days of Noah just as the, the age climax says this is how it's going to be he also speaks about there's going to be a falling away from the faith all of these things are in the scripture even men and seducers are going to wax worse this is what the word of God tells he said that there are going to be earthquakes he says there's going to be wars and then he says there's going to be rumors of wars he says that there's going to be pestilence children are going to be disobedient to their peers this is the kind of uh, conditions that are going to exist but nevertheless praise the name of the Lord God wants us when we see situations like these to cry out to him because because he is our only help at this time and he will be forever he says turn to me praise the name of the Lord with all of your heart with fasting with weeping and mourning this is the time to get into God this is the time that sometimes you have to skip some of the meals amen and you have to pray and fast before the Lord make yourself ready make your heart right because it's the heart that God is looking at in verse 13 of this chapter 2 he, he he sort of reminds them or try to clarify what he was saying to them he says them to turn to the Lord with all of their hearts but then he says to them and rain your heart and not your garments God is not concerned with the outer show. He is concerned about the heart. He wants us, to, amen, and when he says to reign, as the word of God says, to circumcise, to break up the fallow ground of our hearts, amen, so that the Lord could come and reign righteousness upon us, amen. He wants us to deal with the heart issues. The, the, the matters of the heart is what he wants us to deal with, not the outer show, praise the name, not the adorning of oneself, but the inner man, as Peter was saying, the inner man is what he wants us to do. And he says, when we turn to the Lord your God, listen to this very carefully, saints of God. He says, as we turn to the Lord our God, he says, he is gracious. And I, I want to give God thanks that when we go through the word of God, even when we see the judgments and when we see the wrath of God and we see the fury of God uh, in display, we always see it mingle with mercy. God is a God of wrath, but we also see that he he is also a God of mercy. What is the Lord saying to us? He is saying that if we turn to him with all of our hearts, he says he is gracious. Isn't that wonderful tonight that we serve a God who is full of grace? Amen. He is full of grace. And I want to thank him even for this dispensation that we are in, the dispensation of grace. You know, that, that, that grace which speaks of the unmerited favor of God 
something that we don't really deserve. Because the truth is, all of us deserve death. All of us deserve destruction. All of us deserve, because it says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We deserve the wrath of God. But you know something? The Bible says that God so loved the world. Amen. God so loved us that he sent his only begotten son into this world that whosoever will look to him, amen, the word says shall have everlasting life, shall be able to partake of that grace which he gives to us, amen. And he said you shall not perish, but you shall have everlasting life. I'm thankful for this grace uh, which is sufficient for us. Amen. As uh, his strength that is made perfect for us. There is that throne of grace where we can come to and receive uh, uh, his graciousness unto us. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible reminds us that it is by grace. That we are saved. We did not save ourselves. Not of works. If it was of works, we would be boasting of what we did and how we saved ourselves. But it took the spotless Lamb of God when we were without strength. When we were no people, praise the name of the Lord. God sent forth His Son to die in our stead. And He became the perfect sacrifice for us. And He is now seated at the right hand of the Father. The sacrifice was enough to pay a piece of the judgment that was hanging over us, the judgment that came through the sin of the, of the first Adam, but I'm thankful that the second Adam, he came and he brought life to us that life and life more abundantly, so the Lord is saying, if we would turn to him, if we will look to him, he will be gracious unto us, and not only will he be gracious unto us but the word says here tonight he will also be merciful these are the, the qualities, the characteristics. This is the nature of our God. This is what he wants to show to us. Because the, the Bible says that God, he doesn't take any pleasure in the death of a sinner. Do you think that God takes pleasure to see thousands and thousands going down to hell? He has no pleasure in that. And that is what he wants for us to turn to him, those that don't know him, so that you can be eternally saved, to, to be in that place of safety, so that you can have a taste of the goodness and of the mercies of God. Because of, of his mercies, the word of God says, we are not consumed. It is the mercies of God. New every morning is the mercies of God. Great is his faithfulness unto us. He said he is gracious and he says he is merciful. Uh, if we turn to him, he said he is slow. <laughs> oh, somebody give the Lord praise. God is slow to anger. It's not God's desire to destroy the earth and to destroy his creation and to destroy the people that he made. God is slow. The Bible said that he's long suffering. Praise the name of the Lord. The Lord gives us time and space to repent. Time and space to turn to him, slow to anger, and it says here, and, gr and of great kindness. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. No wonder the psalmist says, thy loving kindness, O Lord, is even better than life. Thus will I praise thee. Thus will I bless thee. I will lift up my voice unto your name. We thank God tonight for his graciousness. We want to thank God for his mercies. Amen. We want to thank God for his kindness towards us. These are his moral attributes that he displays to us day by day. And we can have of these attributes when we do what? Turn to the Lord, not half-heartedly, not with our lips, because at one point in time, the Lord says, these people are just serving me with their lips, but their hearts, their hearts are far from me. Uh, but he wants us to turn to him with our whole heart so that we could attain the mercies of God, the loving kindness of God. And in verse 14, the word of God tells us, and who knows? Who knows when we humble ourselves? Who knows when we bow before him with that reverential fear? Who knows when we repent before him, honestly repent and turn away from the evil of our doings? Who knows if he will return and also repent, the Bible says, 
Mm? And leave a blessing behind and a meat offering. Amen. When God shows out his mercies huh, amidst the drought, he's able to send the rain again. He's able to send his blessings again. He's able to relate of what he said he will do. And the prophet says, who knows if he will not praise the name of the Lord, bring to us a meat offering or a drink offering unto the Lord our God. Amen. So I am encouraging you tonight with this word. He goes on in verse 16. He says to gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck breast. I want you to take note of this. He, he is talking about everyone. When God speaks, he speaks not only to one, but he speaks to all. Even the, those children, the very young babies that suck the breast, God was calling on the mothers to bring them out, even the, the bridegroom to go out of his chamber. It was a time that the Lord was calling on the people to seek his face, amen, to get back to him. And I do believe that the Lord has allowed this situation to bring all of us, not some, but all of us to stand still so that we can take some time out, amen, and uh, examine ourselves, amen, and cry out to the Lord, amen, and look to him from whence cometh our help. The psalmist David says in Psalms 121, I will lift up my eyes unto where the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord that do what? And makes the heavens and the earth. It is the Lord who is above us. And sometimes some of us behave as though we make, made ourselves, but we did not make ourselves. He is the one who formed us and fashioned us out of the dust of the earth and then he breathed within us the very breath of life. The word of God reminds us in Psalms 1 27 verse 1, except the Lord build the house. Amen. Except the Lord build the house, their labor in vain that build it. We, this, this verse is telling us that we have to have God included in everything that we do. We must have him as our main source. We must have him as our guide. We must put the Lord always before us. We must have the Lord not just as a, 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 on the sidelines and a convenience, but we must have the Lord as priority of our lives, as the number one in our lives. As that song says, to have him as the one that all, all that matters, amen, to have him as the centerpiece of our life, centerpiece of our, our, our attraction, to have our affection upon him. He says in the, in the same psalm that except the Lord keep the city, the watchman, amen, wake if but in vain. What is this saying and what is the essence of these, these scriptures, amen, that if the Lord don't help us in everything that we go forth and we put our hands to do, we will be failures without God. And so that is why I'm encouraging us, amen, even in these times that we have, hey, let us spend it sensibly, let us spend it wisely, amen, as I, as I said already, let us obey the protocol let us be wise as serpents and harmless as doves praise the name of the Lord and let us draw near to God with that true heart of reverence with all of our hearts everything that is within us and I'm sure that as he has promised that he will be gracious merciful and he will show forth his kindness the Lord will come out to our help in the name of Jesus. We want to give God thanks for his word. Praise the name of the Lord. His word that is in himself. His word that we can put our trust and our confidence in. The Bible tells us in the book of Jeremiah chapter 4 verses 1 and 3. He says, if you will return, and this is, they didn't only have the prophet Joel, but they had various prophets in those days that were speaking to the people of God, calling them back to the place where God will have them to be. He said, if you will return, this is what the Lord was saying to the children of Israel. If you will return, O Israel, says the Lord, if you will return to me, and if you will put away from you the abominations out of my sight, he says, then thou shalt not be removed. 
God wants us to return. And in returning, there must be genuine repentance. There must be a putting away of the abominations. There must be a putting away of the works of the flesh. Those things that displease God. Those things that dishonor God. Amen. And there must be a consecration. Consecrating ourselves as unto God. Because we are reminded in the word that God, He is holy. And without holiness, no man shall see Him. He says, for thus says the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up the fallow ground of your heart and sow not among thorns. God wants us, amen, to break up that, 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 that hardened area, those hardened areas of our hearts. God wants us, amen, to break up those areas so that the word of God will be able, with the word that is as a seed can be able to penetrate. When the natural earth is hardened, the farmer cannot plant the seed properly. He has to break up that ground in order for the seed to penetrate. And this is the same thing that God wants us to do. Break up the hardness of our hearts, the rebellion, the stiff nakedness, so that the seed of the word of God can go into our hearts and can germinate and bring forth what God is looking for. He's looking for fruit, which represents character change to the nature of, of Christ. Amen. Christ in us, the very hope of glory. So I want to give God thanks for his word tonight. He says in the book of Ezekiel chapter 36 26. This is what the Lord says. He says and I will give you a new heart. This is what God wants to do. Amen. Give you a new heart and he says not only that but a new spirit. He says I will put within you. Amen. And he said I will remove the heart of stone. You know sometimes when people they go back from God. They don't pray anymore. God is, is, is um, nothing more to them. God is only a convenience when they need something. And the more they drift from God and from the presence of God, their hearts become hardened. Their hearts become like a stone. And even though God is speaking, some don't recognize his voice when he's speaking. God says, I want to give you a new heart. God said, I want to put a new spirit within you. God said, I want to take away that stony heart that is impenetrable from your flesh. He says, and I will give you a heart of flesh, a heart that is supple, a heart that is tender, a heart that can be touched, a heart that is sensitive to the voice of God, to God's word, a heart that is pliable so that he can fashion and form and make us into what he will have us to be. You see, the heart is very important to God because the Bible says that it's the heart, we must keep it. We can't afford to play with it. It must keep it with all diligence because it's out of the heart. The heart is the real us. Out of it flows the very issues of life. And as I close this devotion, praise the name of the Lord, I want to close off with James chapter 4 verse 8. This is what James in his writing says. Just as the Lord was speaking through the prophet Joel and he was telling the people there to turn to him with their whole heart. We have even in the New Testament, James the servant of God is saying to us, here in James 4 verse 8, he says, draw near to God. And he will draw near to you. You see what God is depending upon us? God wants us to draw near to him. My beloved brethren, if you feel that you are near, you can get nearer to God. Amen. There's more of God that you can have for your soul. Amen. And I, I think this is a time to deepen our relationship and our love with him. You know, as it comes back to me, even there when the spirit of God was speaking to the churches in the book of Revelation, he, he went through. He says, yes, I know your words. I know you're doing some good things. But he told the church of Ephesus, you have left your first love and many of us have left off those first things that 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 first love and this is why this time god wants us to get back to that place because in the book of revelation he says he that have an ear let him hear what the spirit of the lord was saying to the churches because as I said, this is the dressing room. The Spirit of the Lord is speaking. The Spirit of the Lord is working upon the bride because he wants to present that bride as a spotless bride before him without blemish. And so this is like in the, the getting ready chamber where God is causing our hearts to turn 
fully towards him again, getting us ready because I want to say he has promised in a moment and in a twinkling of an eye, we are going to be taken from the earth. The Lord has promised that he's not going to allow us, the saints of God, those who love him, to go through the things, the dreadful things that are going to come upon the face of the earth. He promised that he is going to deliver us from these things. So why? He wants us to turn to him with our whole heart, draw near to him. He wants us to cleanse our hands from the from the sin and to purify our hearts those of us that are double-minded those of us that are upon uh, upon the fence spraddling the fence those of us that are halting between two opinions and i want to say today don't halt between two opinions if god be god let us serve him amen and let us serve him with everything that is within us all of our might with all of our strength and with all that is within us. So the Lord bless you tonight in this devotion. The Lord strengthen you even as we go through. This is our time where we spend before the Lord in His, in His Word and in time of prayer. Praise the name of the Lord.